Hi, I'm Lisa Leiter. Joining me now is Anders Gustafsson. He's the chief executive of Zebra Technologies, which makes barcode and RFID technology that is used in everything from retail stores to hospitals to factories. Anders, thanks so much for being here today. Oh, thank you for having me. Since we last spoke about a year ago, you've made an acquisition in the healthcare industry buying LaserBand, which makes patient identification bands. What did this company get you that you didn't have already, and how do you see your healthcare business uh, growing in the future as a result of this acquisition? Yes, yeah, so healthcare is one of our smaller vertical markets today, but it's been our fastest growing market for the last probably five years. When we spoke last year, you had said that healthcare had grown to 10% of your revenue. Where do you see that number uh, going forward, let's say, in the next year? We, we expect it to continue to grow quite nicely. Think of healthcare, the two of the biggest issues they face is how do they minimize you know, medical errors or improve care, and how do they get more cost-effective care? And our solutions really address both of those. Another area of growth for you has been the retail sector. I'm a shopper. I've certainly yeah. seen more mobile-type cashiers yeah. and also inventory being tracked. If they don't have something in one store, they're able to very easily find it for you in another store. What types of growth opportunities are you seeing in, in retail right now? If you think about the, some of the big issues in retail, it's around you know creating brand loyalty, uh, how to improve the shopping experience, and be more efficient. And again, I think we can enable the retailer to have a real-time view of their inventory, instead of having to go out and once a week do a manual count. So that leads to you know, higher likelihood that you have the good somebody coming in, the customer comes in to, to look for, so they're more likely to buy and walk out being happy. And you can also, as a retailer, have better inventory accuracy. You can have less inventory, more of the right stuff, so you know, the, the cash flow improves. Absolutely, and we're about to enter the holiday shopping season, unbelievably so already. What types of things will, will shoppers and consumers be seeing in this regard, um, maybe as early as this season? I think there's a lot of things that are, that are coming out. You mentioned uh, kind of smart smart devices. So there's you know, some customer of ours where you can actually walk in the door and you have your loyalty card being RFID enabled. So they can read that and they can then have things, you know, they can change the signage as you walk through the store. They can also have kind of personal information of, of how soon or how quickly would you like to be approached by a salesperson. And things like, say, 25 different customers bring the same garment into the fitting room, but nobody buys it. They say, that's a nice looking garment, but it's not very well fitting. So they had to do some changes to it. So you can see how, how some of these technologies are really starting to have an impact on the whole shopping experience. Absolutely. And you also do a lot of work, obviously, with manufacturers and factories, particularly in the automotive supply chain. I'm wondering how you view that recovery and what's your take on the factory sector right now? We've seen a, a strong recovery in particularly North America automotive, and I think that's part of big automakers in the U.S. coming back, but also they're the investing in technologies to make themselves more efficient. And I have to ask you, since you are in so many different industries, what your view is of the overall U.S. economy and what your outlook is going forward? We see North America as being more robust than many of our other international markets today. And I think we've also been more fortunate than many that our, our value proposition work well in, the, in this time. Companies are not so uh, focused on expanding to new facilities, new factories or new uh, retail stores. They're more looking to drive cost efficiencies and our, our value proposition work in both of those areas. That's a nice segue into my next question, which is we talked last time too about that you saw some opportunities in the ticketing industry, for example, or perhaps the food supply chain. Has there been any growth there, any opportunities there, and what do you envision for those two markets? Yeah, I think that the cold chain for food is, is is attractive because it, I think it's $600 million a year or something is wasted in the U.S. alone based on spoilage. So if you have the solutions that can really better, much better track the temperature of, of, and, the, and the quality of, of produce that's being shipped. And it would also help certainly if there was some type of salmonella outbreak or something like that that you would be able to very easily trace the source of the outbreak. Yes, yeah, we, we can um, provide many, many, a lot of tools to be able to have kind of genealogy or traceability back to you know, which farm, uh, which day things were harvested or, or whatever. 
I'm curious what your impression is of the Chicago tech scene now versus five, 10 years ago. Have we finally achieved this long held dream of being a Silicon Prairie here? What's your take <laughs> on that? I think that the, there's definitely making you know, good progress. Uh, you know, as an example, we actually this year opened a, an office in the West Loop uh, for and created a new small software team. So you know, we try to take, take advantage of more of the software skills and talent that's available more, more in the downtown area. So I, I think there's definitely been a lot of progress made in that area over the last you know, three, four, five years. Okay, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.